you know, I did a documentary, The Black Knight Satellite, Beyond the Signal. Oh. And there's this object orbiting Earth that is estimated to be there for 13,000 years. And how we get this number is the NSA analyzed the signal from it. Uh, a couple of astrophysicists analyzed the signal. And some ham radio operators back in the 50s also got the same signal. All independent came up with the same translation decoding of the signal that it was saying it was from the Epsilon Boetis constellation. Then they discovered that in, it was in a polar orbit. It had changed course and went into a polar orbit, something we couldn't do until just recent times. We didn't even know how to get a polar orbit orbiting from pole to pole. In order to create a lot of the megalithic structures that you've seen, like the pyramid complexes and everything else, you need a polar orbit. But this thing has been orbiting in a polar orbit from the 1950s. The object itself is interesting because a Epsilon Boetis comes up individually several times. So I looked into Epsilon Boetis. I'm like, well, let me see. Let me research this place. Found out there's something called a void there. This void is called a Boetis void. It's the largest known void in the universe. It's not even dust in this area going on for about 250 uh, million light years or some crazy spanning number like that. And so I saw uh, Michio Kaku, the famous theoretical yeah. physicist, talking yeah. about it. And he said that in that void, it looks like lights being bent around that area. And he says that we think that it's a potentially it could be a cloaked advanced civilization. So I looked into it a little bit deeper and discovered that Boetus is owned by Enlil from the ancient Sumerian tablets. These beings owned planets and moons, and some even owned constellations. It, and Enlil was the ruler of the earth at that time. And guess what Enlil had in his in the tablets? He had the all-seeing eye, the eye of Sauron, which has made it into the Lord of the Rings. He had the all-seeing eye. They copied that from the tablets. Wow. The Lord of the Rings copied it from the oh tablets. Oh, my gosh. So he can see, now listen to this. He can see population densities on the planet. He can see who had crops, who didn't have crops. He can see weather patterns all over the Earth. And you can only do that with, an, with a polar orbiting satellite. Because as the Earth spins on its axis, the satellite's orbiting this way. And so as the Earth is, and as, so as the satellite's orbiting this way, it's taking swaths, I'm sorry, swaths right, of data. Right. And it's scanning topography, it's scanning patterns, it's scanning everything you need, right? For barometric pressures and all that kind of stuff. You can see scanning densities. Uh, you know, you can scan for population densities. All that can come from one satellite orbiting mm. the planet in a polar orbit. He had that. He knew what was going on. And he would, unfortunately, he was a pretty evil dude. If humans were getting too outrageous in one area, overpopulating an area, he would just have them killed. He would just, this is in the tablets, just kill them. 100,000, 200,000. He would dry their crops out. He would spray stuff on their crops and to dry them out so they can starve to death. All this kind of crazy stuff. This guy was just ruthless. He saw us just as animals. He didn't see us as, as real sentient beings. Uh, but this guy owned Boetis. So I said, wait a minute. So I, the more I dug into it, I realized that the Black Knight satellite, this object that is still orbiting our planet right now, NASA, it's on NASA's server. It's called, they call it space junk. Space junk. Yeah, they call it space junk. They don't know what it is. It's been there. The STS-88 mission did a flyby and caught a great HD image of this thing. It's about estimated 15 tons. It's in our orbit. Oh, yeah. It's okay. in our orbit. So it's not it's not far out. It's not outer space. It's No, no. It's at Lagrange 4, Lagrange Point 4, I believe. Okay. And it's orbiting out there, and uh, it's still there. They won't mess with it because it makes no sense to mess with it. You don't know what type of self-defense system or mechanism this thing may have, but the reason why I think it's important, based on what you were telling me about the gentleman, is because I believe that this thing is watching us. I think it's watching us, and I believe that it's using quantum entanglement to transmit everything in real time, what's going on on Earth, back to home base at mm, Boetis. Wow. And that this could be the grabby civilization that we're, you're talking about that is watching and making sure we don't get too crazy because they don't want us to be a threat. They talked about us being coming a threat in the Sumerian tablets. In the myth of Adapa, they talked about it. They talked about it in the Atrahasis epic. They talked about it in the epic of Gilgamesh. All these tablets, they talk about us potentially rising up and even superseding them uh, and, and, and making sure that we never found out that we don't need them. Mm. This is an ancient tablets. And now finding, finding out that he is the, uh, a tri the, the constellation of Boetus is attributed to Enlil. And this thing gives off the signal to Boetus. And even in the NSA document, which is read in my documentary, it all comes together like, wow, what is going on here?